Hello, everybody. Welcome back uh, to the first lecture of the ECE 202. Uh, today, we're going to talk about the phasers, the first lecture on um, the, the uh, topic dealing with sinusoidal steady state uh, signals. And today, we cover a few topics and we have the phaser concept. Um, but I want to answer the question of what is the phaser and why we need it. And then we will uh, discuss the transformation between the phasers and the sinusoidal signal itself. And then the property which is of the phaser, which is part of the most important property, is the property of derivative. And the phaser, uh, the, the phaser of a derivative of a sinusoidal signal is just to make the uh, phaser is very useful. That's the the key secret uh, of the phaser itself. Um, and then we do uh, talk about the calculations. Uh, along the way, we'll have some examples. So let's jump into the first topic. Uh, what is the phaser? The phaser is just a a complex number. Well, it's the complex number will give it the complex number a special meaning. And we map this complex number to a sinusoidal signal. Let's see if we have voltage. The time domain have sinusoidal voltage and VA times cosine omega t plus theta. So we know this uh, VA is amplitude. And omega is a frequency. And basically that we call the angular frequency. The angular frequency in terms of the unit is radian per second, right? And the theta is a phase angle. So it could be uh, in degrees or in radians. So this is a phase angle. And this is a, the, the sinusoidal signal. This is a steady, if this is a constant, so if these are all constant, all constant for steady state sinusoidal. For steady state sinusoidal. So we the complex number we form a complex number we denote that with a phaser. So we call this we use um, the capitalized uh, letter V uh, with a vector uh, top hat, and that equal to we take the amplitude as the magnitude of the phaser, and we take the phase angle, and we drop this. So omega is dropped, and we we use that. Uh, we so this is the phaser. Specifically, this is the the complex number in polar form, right? And we, I mean, based on the Euler identity, e to j x is equal to cosine x plus j sine x which is the Euler identity and we can um, we can uh, write the rectangular form of this phaser is going to be equal VA times cosine theta plus J VA sine theta right so this is the rectangular form And if we um, if we uh, illustrate this in the uh, on the in a complex plane with the horizontal this is a real axis and the vertical the uh, is the imaginary axis. So in this case the phaser let's see if this is the V 
this is the phasor V and in the polar form it's gonna be it, it's gonna be uh, the angle here would be theta the magnitude of this phasor is gonna be um, the uh, VA right and then the real axis the real part of this complex number on the real axis this should be VA times cosine theta and on the imaginary axis here this should be equal to VA times sine theta so that's the the phasor itself right so it's a very simple concept it's just a complex number we give it the special meaning of the complex number um, this is complex number this get two pieces of information from the time domain signal but we drop into the on uh, the uh, the frequency information um, so then you may ask why we need this right so why we need this phaser and we have uh, we have sinusoids to signal why we don't work with sinusoid then the simple question is is we don't really want to why we need why do we need phaser the simple answer is the phaser can allow us to avoid using differential equations if you remember if you work with derived in time domain signal if you have a capacitor let's see you have an ic you have the voltage and you know the IC is equal C dV C dT right so you learn that in 201 and if we have an inductor um, you have an L you have an I sub L you have V sub L and then you have um, VL is equal L di dT and so this is the differential equations. Imagine you have many, many of those components in a circuit, and then you end up with many differential equations. You, if you want to know the solutions of the system, let's say I want to know the voltage and the current of certain components or certain elements of the circuits, and then you need to solve this uh, differential equation simultaneously, which is could be very challenging almost imagine almost impossible to manage um, in that case and the phaser we will see um, very quickly the derivative property actually allows us to um, to deal with the uh, the algebraic equations rather than the differential equations okay so the simple answer is so the phaser will phaser will allow us allow us to work with the algebraic equations instead of instead of uh, differential equations So that's the main risk. Also, there are other additional benefits as you um, as you progress your uh, your study career, and and you take a more advanced course, you will find the phasers actually will give you much deeper insight into the system. So you can quickly figure out what which one is the leading and lagging, or the other power factor, or the other aspects of the system. But right now. You know the phaser will allow us at least we can deal with the system very complicated um, but uh, um, 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 but uh, you you don't need to solve the differential equations uh, it, which is very difficult okay so I'm gonna uh, stop uh, this part of the video and I'm gonna start another one uh, for the uh, for the second topic